Black people. Welcome back to the plight and struggle of Black people in America. As you know, normally on Sundays, we have our prominent Black people series. And as usual, we have a prominent Black guest today, a very special guest. And <clears throat> this brother's brother, Damon Jamil. He, uh, he's a licensed educator for 22 plus years. He's a mentor and child advocate, and he's also a community developer. Without further delay, we'll bring our brother in. <laughs> hey, brother, Damon, uh, how you feeling, man? <laughs> peace, peace, brother. Uh, all is well, brother. I'm blessed, and uh, I'm, I'm okay. grateful to be on the show. I appreciate you for giving me the opportunity to come uh, spend a little time on your platform with you. Oh, yeah. Hey, I love that music, man. And, and, oh, and man. Then, did I know you did the shirt like that, man. I remember that picture at the museum, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. We took it that day. And what I do, I'll see so many things I like, and I'll make a shirt, and I'll have them ready for when, when it's the best time. Yeah, the best time. Hey, that worked out, man. That was, you I got think going to be surprised. I do. I think he's going to be surprised yeah, about this. Hey. That, that's nice, man. I want me one of those, man. I yeah. think if I get my T-shirt, man, matter of fact, yeah. I always call him my t-shirt man, Brother Whitfield. Mm -hmm. Where he's everything, man. Actually, he's the owner of uh uh Simon Says Productions. Okay. I use them primarily for t-shirts, but we have some mugs we're gonna do for fundraising. He does that. Uh if you have bottles you want for somebody's holidays, he does so many things, so you can look okay. that up. But yeah, yeah I have nice. to get with them in uh you want the same color shirt or what? What color you want it to be? I I, I want mine and uh you give me a either black or blue. Either one of hey, what size? Uh I like my large. I like a large. Oh right, yeah, I I will hook you up. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that, man. I that's yeah. nice. That was a powerful picture, man. I I, oh, I man. Uh, who you tell that was a very powerful picture, man. We we stood in there. That. that was a, a powerful group of brothers in the picture, too. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And we were in a powerful place, right? With the yeah, ancestors the around and all too. that good stuff, man. Yeah, what you talking man. about? So that was uh that was after the the, the Malcolm the Malcolm X event that we had, the celebration of life. Right, yeah. right, right. Malcolm, yeah. and then we uh we were at the African American Museum on that one. So See, and uh, I tell people all the time, okay, black people, we're doing better collectively than what it looks like, okay? Because right. if you're not around the type of black people that are doing positive things, you'll think that they don't exist. Absolutely. Because the mass media is not going to show us in that light. Absolutely. So I know what's going on because I do what I do and I be around those type of people. And there's so many of us, when you in that lane, you run into them. You run into and them. And you, you make mine you automatically almost, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. And, and I, you know, I respect you for that because like you said, uh, it, we we don't necessarily, especially as black men, man, we don't really show up in, in the mainstream media, not in the light that we do this work on a community level. And, and much respect, man. Salute and honor to you. I, I, I know you been in this this struggle, this freedom struggle for a long time. I see your background. You got the you know what I mean? so, I'm 62 now, so I came to Dallas at 20. I yeah. guess I got broomed and prepped in Philly before I got here. When I got in Dallas, so much knowledge was available and activities as well, and people. Mm -hmm. And like I say, you go into what you're about. And right. you'll see who those people are, and you'll click with the ones that you click with, and they're Absolutely. plentiful. That's Absolutely. why I know we're at the threshold of being self sufficient because I'm in the mix, so I know what yeah, we yeah, do. Yeah, I'm yeah. seeing what we're doing. You yeah, just, we and know. I'm one of many. Absolutely, yeah. you know That's what they say. If, if you know, you know. You, you That's know. That's what that is. That's real talk, too, man. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but like I said, I appreciate you having me on again. My name is Damon Jamil. Okay. Um, 
you know, I, I'm an educator. I've been in Dallas for you know, probably 20 years now. Um, okay. Teaching primarily in South Dallas, Pleasant Grove, Oak Cliff, you know, just out in, you know, DISD school system. Uh, you know, we fight this this war on many battlefields. My battlefield was the, the schools and specifically in the classroom with the children. Absolutely. And, um, you know, it, it, it's war, man. It, it really is war on our children. And, and you know, it, it's the consequence of us allowing, you know, this system to, to, to educate our children. You know what I mean? And, and you're going to get to, to, to miseducate them, actually, because see, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's our fault, though, yeah. primarily the older generations, my generation, mm -hmm. which I contend this for, and I'm of the third oldest of our four. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have individuals here and there that does things. We just haven't had the massive numbers that we should have. Mm -hmm. But you know what, man? I've been doing this a long time, and I just realized the less than a month that a lot of times the reason that a lot of black brothers that would love to go to schools and deal with the children, and even sisters, I suppose, but I've been dealing with black men mostly, a lot of the brothers have prison records. Right. And when you want to go into the school to participate in violence, you have to go through the screen and that prison record make it where they don't qualify. Right, right. right. So I said, wow. And all this time I've been dealing on so many levels, I never thought of that till recently, mm -hmm. but that's real. That mm -hmm. is so real. And, and sometimes and, and, voting, you can't vote and you can't right. even volunteer to children, our children as a community schools. So, so for me, it, it's funny that you say that, and that's that's a, a, a great point. And so, what I what I do primarily in my work now is find ways to, you know, because there's a way you can get around almost anything, right? If you just kind of not um, almost anything, <laughs> anything if it's not against the laws of physics. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, no doubt. Um, you know, I don't know if you know, but my my, my dear brother Sharif, he uh. You know, 17, 18 years in the penitentiary, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. on the other side of that whole struggle, now he, he's on this redemptive path. And, and you know, we, we've kind of bonded up and, and you know, he, he wanted to get in front of the children. And for me, it was always like, OK, they got the those type of individuals, those brothers who have been through the system. Right. Mm -hmm. They got the best stories. Right. Not only do they have the best stories, they have the most credibility with the children as far as. I can tell you where, if you continue that course, where you're going to end up, right? And so that approach is so important to, you know, making a connection with a lot of our young brothers who are out right. here, you know, halfway in that street life. And so um, what I've done is I've worked ways in which he and others like him can actually, you know, interact with the children on a community level. Uh, and then it's like mayhem, the mentor, and yeah, like that. Right, having right. them brothers be able to give their direct testimony to the children because right. that that's that's what's gonna move them, you know what I mean? See? Those type of brothers, and, and, and not to mention, you know, them youngsters, man, <clears throat> when you have a certain demeanor, they gravitate towards that too, yeah, see? yeah, they Cause, do. Because, like, for instance, myself, and I know there's like some people I know that have had to experience that type of life. I'm talking about adults now. Like, mm -hmm. I was born and raised in the ghetto of North Philly. Mm -hmm. I've never been in a gang. I ain't never been to prison. I ain't never been in no military. Right. But I've been in Dallas, Texas since I was 20 and I'm 62. Right. And some fellas be thinking, well, a lot of people go by what they see, but some fellas think, well, you want no gang. You want talking about you ain't street cred. Right. Like, I'm wondering, what is street cred? Right. I, I wasn't in no gang or nothing, like I said, but I was in the streets. Right. And I didn't get no trouble, fortunately. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what street cred is. I don't know how you can get no more cred than having to be in that life and hoping you survive. When I was in my teens, I asked God, just don't let me die in my 20s. I was sincere, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so if, if that ain't a, what you need for prayer, but guess what? The people that know what it is, when they see you, they feel you. Yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. Know what you yeah, it's, it's it's the interesting thing about that is I I, I live my life is similar to yours. I'm I'm you know I'm 47, and you know I'm out the Midwest. You know, uh, it, I, in Gary, Indiana, I remember the, the the state police. I mean, the state troopers had to come in and police the city because it was so, you know, it it was a mill town, crack hit. You know, stuff got bad. You know how we do, and and so that whole story. I've never joined the gang, you know, although Philly family members, you know, everybody affiliated. Um, you know, I never sold dope, but you know, 
everybody around me doing that. You know, it, it's, it's just because you didn't do make those same decisions don't mean that you ain't in it and, you know, around and it. And know what this life you know is like life for people. Like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I always tell people, you know, my entire life, I've always been in it, but not of it, because I've always been like on my own thing, right? So regardless of what's going on around me, I always knew like, hey, if I can, if I can get in here and I can see a way or I can envision, you know, a path for myself, I'm just going to stay my, I ain't following nobody. And, you know, and, and you get to a point where people see you headed somewhere and they won't even involve you in that, in that stuff. Like my partners was doing all kinds of stuff and they didn't call me like, hey, D, let's go. You know, it wasn't right. They know you wasn't with it. Yeah, yeah, they knew not to get me involved in stuff like that. And so, you know, but I'm in it. You know what I mean? Like, it's happening all around me. I right, right. Like you said, not like of it, though. So, like it's Right, and not yeah. of it. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 I can speak to that, right? And so my work primarily with the youth is showing them that you can be in environments like this and navigate them in a way uh, where you can actually make it out of it without death. It's, it's especially in the city, and I'm gonna put it this way: as great as Dallas, Texas, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, death yeah. and violence and crime is everywhere. But mm -hmm. I believe definitely people in Dallas, Texas, born and raised, don't appreciate Dallas as much as I do. Absolutely, <laughs> but Absolutely. I truly, no, I, I love it here. <laughs> I agree. I agree, and yeah. and don't really see you know what's happening as far as like. Cause I got youngsters that I mentor here, man, man, and they, you know, they've been here so long, and and this has been an, a a real oppressive kind of environment to the locals here. Like they've done some things traditionally to the people here that, you know, from the eminent domain stuff to, you know, just a lot of the oppressive, you know, uh, tactics that they've used against the people that have kind of made the the, gener the, the generation after, you know, they just apathetic they really don't you know they just or whatever and i'm like look at all this opportunity out here y'all don't see all and it's just like they really don't know how to you know come into that energy of it you know they, they you definitely know. don't know and then the sad part is the system has been the problem generational and generations Absolutely. over and over because like Absolutely. i started my volunteer career in disd and mm -hmm. west dallas projects probably mm -hmm. 1990 mm -hmm. and uh they were teaching the children how to read through what they call word memorization. Mm -hmm. Whole language. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, but how you gonna teach them how to read like that if they don't know how to read? Mm -hmm. Finance is the only way I've ever seen. They taught us that even though in my household I could read before I ever went to school mm -hmm. due to my mom and sisters taught me how mm -hmm. to read. But even when I went to school, they had uh, the alphabet up on the deal, mm -hmm. and you wrote it, copied it, and. They even had it in print and cursive. Then mm -hmm. I found out what 15 years ago, maybe they took cursive out of school. Yeah, they don't teach cursive anymore. I have a friend that he took his friend's daughter to get her driver's license mm -hmm. and because she didn't learn, learn cursive. She didn't even know what a signature was. Yeah, they don't know. And that's the thing accidental. Right, you know right, absolutely, up. absolutely. And so it is, it, you know, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because it we've lost so much when we think about our children not being able to read, you know what I mean? Like that's so foundational, that's fundamental. They took out phonics. Uh, they tried to do this whole language thing, like you saying, where they just teach them words and then try to rhyme the words and all that kind of stuff and develop the vocabulary. That was bull, that was bull. You, yeah, well, you, <laughs> you, we can see that in the results of that kind no, of thing. No, you could see that, well, I could before the results, if I knew what was happening. This is the method you use to teach somebody how to read. They yeah, can't read. Find it. There's right. no better way. Period. Yeah, the only yeah, thing so, you can do is try to hurt somebody by changing it. By changing that up, and, and, and so, it, and specifically, it it impacted like black children, right? So the African American, mm -hmm. when you go through the school system and you look at each school, and you look at which uh, children are reading below grade level, it's mm -hmm. almost always you know our children specifically, and so. That's a part of the, the effect of the design by changing that that phonics and, and moving away from that. That's the purpose for those that don't get anything at home. Yeah, so, absolutely, absolutely. And that's, that's unfortunate. And therefore, it's primarily our fault that our children are in the dilemma that they're in. Yeah, and, and it's because we're not doing enough on a community level though, you know absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, and, and like what you said, since the men can't go in, you say you can do something on the outside and bring them to it. 
to mm-hmm. the children. Yeah. I'd so like we, to get involved in some of that. Whatever yeah, that create is. community schools. Uh, that's the idea, creating opportunities for them to learn outside of, you know, the classroom, uh, utilizing other, you know, uh, I call them, uh, you have these learning nets, right? These environments where the children are. And if you could just put programming in, like we do programming in the recreation centers, right? And the idea is, you know, the which, children, which, which whose recreation centers? Who who own the recreation centers? The city of Dallas. The city of so Dallas. So you have to go on their schedule. Well, what we do is, generally speaking, we'll go in and meet the leadership at the the local. So, so for say, for example, we're at J.C. Phelps. We'll go to J.C. Phelps and we'll go and talk to the leadership there, and they'll say, well, we. We have an after school program or Hiawatha Williams, which used to be Cummings, right? And uh, they'll say we have an after school program. The children leave school, they come here at three o'clock, and then we have them to six. We need programming. And so, what we do in that space is you can create a community school in these learning nests because the children will be there. And all you got to do is come in and give programming. And that programming can be tutoring, it can be remediation, it can be, you know, finance. We can just go learn how to, you know, do the ladder sounds and things like that. My organization, where family enterprises, we do social emotional learning, uh, mm-hmm. building uh, self awareness and social awareness, and you know just uh, mental uh, growth and development, character building. So we do that kind of work with the youth. Um, but then we just have to figure out, you know, how we're going to supplement right so now. So what's your target age group of the youth that you're dealing with? So right now we're working with. Children as young as second grade, all the way up to you know twelfth grade. So okay. it's 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 a it's a That's wide good. range right now, and they're you know just in different learning environments. I like uh, the second grade part because those babies need to be reached ASAP. ASAP. The sooner the better, you know. The sooner the better. Yeah. I like uh, that. The interesting thing is, you know, when you when you think about the group that's going to alternative school. Our second mm-hmm. graders are going to alternative school. They're getting kicked out of school. But they actually have alternative schools ready for the second graders. Huh? Second graders right. And then you always know, you know, everybody know that if they don't do well on the third grade reading test and like they're going to automatically, you know, send the data. The data is going to follow them. They know they can make a bed, at the, in, you know, in the local penitentiary because they know that. If the child is not reading in the third grade, there's a chance that the child is not going to be able to matriculate through the system successfully. And they know eventually they're going to drop out or get in trouble with law enforcement in some way, shape, or form, right? So they, yeah. they it's systematic, it's systemic. Um, you know, the, the, I always tell people what, what really killed education for, you know, just across the board was just this high stake testing. And all of that happened during the Bush era where it was just like, you know, they don't pass this test. It, 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 so as an educator in the classroom, everything became about, how can I get them to pass the test? How can I get them to pass the test? And so a lot of the the, the holistic approach to teaching children, we had time for. It. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you really did not. But, but at the same time, man, I think uh, education was killed way before Bush. Well, no, Educa- is- education. I'm thinking always seemed like for black folk, education was killed once we start being integrated. So that, <laughs> that's, that's, first right. that, killed, that's right the big, That's the big yeah. picture. So I, I that's, you know, yeah, I that's the, what you're saying. The primary we picture, start, the, well, yeah. well, 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 what well, happened? Well, picture, well, you see, that's well, collected. But this is what this is what this is what I did. So, like, I'm the type. Okay, it's happened, right? So, how do we? What what can we do to make the best out of this situation? Because even though this happened, we still could have. You know, we still can make the best out. We still can bring some progress. We to still it, gonna right? be self sufficient. Right. We're be so how do we? How do we do that? So people like me went into education. So I, as a, okay. a high schooler, went to the university. You mean become an educator yourself? I'm an educator myself, so that right, I can right. go directly From the inside. Into the yeah, that's to what I'm being. So that when they learn and they learn it from me and I'm teaching them like I teach my own children. So Absolutely. It's, it's that's a whole different approach. Not many of us do that, but that was out of love. See, sadly, a lot of people don't think about love. I mean, and where I come from in the era I grew up, the schools, like for instance, one through 12, every school in the whole city, you had every week, the same day, same time, you had an assembly program. 
Mm-hmm. And it was sometimes to get the youngsters attention, sometimes to applaud them, sometimes to whatever, and sometimes just to bring them in the local entertainment group, the Thompson Brothers, because they know they want to hear them sing. Mm-hmm. They don't do nothing like that here. Nothing. Right. Right. It's right. nothing about, like you said, it's all about state to state. Nothing about, okay, how can we teach these children about love and respect? Right. By showing them some love and respect. Absolutely. You see? Absolutely. So they, and, and sadly, even adults are not enjoying themselves in the teaching field in most cases. No. It's no. terrible, man. A lot yeah. of us have left, right? I'm, I'm just going to be honest. Like a lot of us, oh, I, I'm considered old school teacher. You know, if you've done 20 to 30 years in this, yeah, this yeah. you know, in this field, you are. What you're age group were you teaching? Uh, oh. pri- primarily upper elementary. So fourth, fifth and sixth grade. Yeah. So fifth so and that, sixth were always my favorite. Yeah, 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 that, that, that was my favorite. You know, that's that transition. You know, most my my wife and I were talking about this today. We we kind of, you know, you lose the children, or you either they're going to change, or they're going to maintain at the fifth grade because that's right before they go to middle school, and so you see, start. And, and they change. But well, see, my mindset was this: I love the fifth and sixth grades, and at that time, fifth and sixth was in elementary. They yeah, just that changed elementary. that five years or whatever. Mm-hmm. But anyway. My thought was they're old enough to understand anything you tell them. Absolutely. But they're young enough, if they're not on track, they got time to get on track get before they get out of high school. See, right. That's why those were my favorite fifth Absolutely. or sixth graders. Absolutely. And, and that's that's the important part. And so that's what we've done in our community work piece. And so, um, you know, I, I, I was talking, you know, the, the subject or the title for today was the school to prison pipeline and, and my... Yes. My goal and objective with that was to kind of give an understanding that it it is a very you know deliberate thing in its form and its function, right? Uh, even the designs of the schools are very similar to the designs of the penitentiary. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, me and brother Sharif we went to uh, middle school in Oak Cliff. As a matter of fact, mm-hmm. we went in a building and they had the lines on the floor. And they had the, the way they had them lined up and then they had their hands, they had to put their hands behind their back. And then they have like armed police officers on campus now. And so uh-huh. he stopped and he was like, I was like, damn man, like this is just like the penitentiary. Now this man had did almost 20 years. So he was looking at how they were doing the middle school. Who students. was he? Who was he that said that? Brother Sharif, my, my oh your brother. Okay, I thought yeah. it was somebody at the school. No, yeah, no, no, worked there, so. no, we we went yeah. into the school to do right, a, right. a workshop with the youth, right. and he was just noticing how they moved. Just it, like uh, it. it, I mean, identical. It, it wow. blew his mind that, and I was just trying to get him to understand that this is a school to prison pipeline. It is deliberate. It is in the structure, its form, its function. It's directly getting them ready for. It, in so many ways, because I so heard ways. decades ago that they go by the failure rate of third graders to determine how many prisons to build. Even absolutely, absolutely, I heard that more than 15, 20 years ago. And and that, and so when you think about that, and then you go tie into the fact that they're creating non readers, right? So these are literally children, right? So the children are they know that it's something in the ability to read, right? They know that to read and write, there's something in that. And they know that if they cannot pass this test in the third grade, they're going to be forever behind because the system don't have many ways for them to catch up on reading. But guess what else they know? What else they know? And see, and, and a lot of people don't talk about this or think about this. I think so much myself. Mm-hmm. What about this? Let me ask you this. Let me make it a question for you. If every school child in this whole country in every school, public and private, one through 12, mm-hmm. got straight A's, all of them. Mm-hmm. At the end of that 12th grade, is there enough high learning class and institutions for all of those students that got straight A's? I don't think the system is designed to handle everybody. No, I didn't ask. That wasn't my question. That was not my question. That was my question. Specifically? If every student, one through 12, in this whole country gets straight A's, every child, at the end of that 12th grade thing, do they have enough higher learning classroom and institutions for all those children? Right if now? They all got, yes, if they yeah, all got straight I, I think, Listen, I don't think there's any short of, you know, uh, higher learning institutions. That's not... that's Not, not, not for the numbers that they're having go there. No, there's not. 
I no, they, if no, everybody got straight A's, then there would be. That's listen, the listen, there is so many, there's so much money in higher education that they're building, everybody's starting a new university. They got, yeah, and they, they're university. starting up for a certain group of people. Yeah, I, I just get like it. they're building those prisons for a certain group of people. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and so it has its portions, but I what what I've seen is that both of them, both the the higher learning, because we are graduating and more of our children are going to college than going to penitentiary today. Now that wasn't happening in the 90s, but in today's yeah, generation, but more I of them are saying, going I'm, Yeah, I'm not implicating that, but we just on something else, but we're, we're talking about it. Yeah, yeah. It's, but, you know, <laughs> because it's, what I, I was going to say, if you saw that that I just said, I was going to say this after that. And then after that, okay, not there's not enough higher learning class. If every child was getting straight A's, that's the key because not that many getting it. Now, let's say everybody did that, got the education. Now, every working age individual in this country, is there a job and opening for every working age citizen in this nation? So the supply meet demand is what I'm trying to get to on either side. If it was all like it's designed to go happily, go ever after with the American dream. So, so all A's for everybody that, and then that, a job for everybody, right? Everybody that, can't have so their own business. Too, that's too big for me. That's too big for me. Okay, good. Can, well, see, that's what, what I mean. I'll be dealing on that scale. Though. What I can do is like make it more micro and do like the dollar. Your part. Your part. That's what it's all about. Let's do DFW, right? So DFW okay. between the Dallas County community, the, the, the community colleges, right? They have a whole uh, system of community colleges. They mm -hmm. have all of the, the universities that are local. They have colleges. They have enough higher learning institutions or vocations or whatever for more of our children. That, that, that 30, 40% that's being left behind, that's a, they're feeding into the prison industrial complex, they can get a higher education, rather it be vocational or from a university or, or college, right? There's a lot of opportunity in DFW for you to go further your education. The problem is, and this is what I've found just from local universities, talking to professors, right, even right. working at you know different schools at periods of time, um, the children are being sent off out of high school because they've, they've done this thing with the high school diploma where you can you can do the bare minimum and they'll give you a minimal diploma diploma. That means that when you go to the next level, you're going to have you can't take freshman level classes. You got to take the remediation classes. These are zero level classes because this, the, high, the K through 12 education did not prepare you for moving on to the next level and doing college level courses. Right. And so um, they they do have enough in that way. <coughs> As far as the local economy is concerned, the job, the employers, the local business owners are also <laughs> complaining because the, 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 the ones that are making it to the space where they're looking for employment and they're getting hired, they are not equipped in the social skills department. Those are the hard, the hard and soft skills. They don't have any of that, that kind of, you know, and so everybody is complaining on every level about what's happening through the on the K through 12 level with the children to get them prepared for the next level, whether it be, you know, college, vocational school or employment, you're still not preparing the children to be able to meet the demands of the local economy. And that's across the board, right? That's the complaint about these school districts, right? That's what's so education is, it, you know, we're, we're missing you know, we're, we're really missing the target as far as what we're we're because we're, there's no intentionality to what we're doing. Now, I'm 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 a big proponent that we do need community schooling, that we do need some kind of uh, direct plan as far as our children and directing them. You know, our culture, our, our Afrocentric culture isn't about allowing children to just go do whatever like you you would be guided towards, you know, what your community needed or what your village or, or whatever needed. And that's what you would do based on your own personal gifts and talents. This whole idea of allowing them to just go bump their head and figure out what they're going to do. We didn't do that. And so if we can get more into a community uh, schooling idea that allows us to, we got a problem with the, the police department. Well, how about we raise our own police, you know what I mean? Officers, right? These young boys who, you know, they play football and basketball, but they're not going pro. They might not even go to the next level. 
Well, what can they do, bro? They can go join DPD and patrol their own communities. You see what I'm saying? So I, I believe like the next level of education for us is being able to specifically, you know, educate our children in a, in a, in a pathway that allows them to enfranchise. Because my, my whole mission is to engage our youth, right? Encourage our youth, right? Educate our youth and empower our youth for future enfranchisement. So it's this idea that if they can go through these pipelines of, you know, entrepreneurship, apprenticeship, mentorship, sponsorship, we can put them through these pipelines and they can end up being directly placed into positions within their community where they can be of service, mm -hmm. right? For community service to teach children how to be of service to their community. So we don't have to complain about our local politicians anymore. Guess what? He's been a politician since he was 12 years old, right? And he's been working through this program this entire time. Guess what he's doing the first time he gets a little legal age? We run it for his neighbor. <clears throat> Over run for city council over here. He already know the game plan. He already know what we on. So he gonna right, you know, right. start grooming your own. Right? <coughs> mm -hmm. And that way, the education because we always say the education for us don't have a direct impact on the economics. Right? If you look at the four birds, the culture, right? You look at what's happening culturally. You look at what's happening educationally. You look at what's happening economically and politically because our education system doesn't translate into any economics for for the people right education should be a direct it should be like a pipeline from education to economics right and then from that economic base into a political power right without the economics you don't have any political power so it's like how do you create a pipeline where you are generating sustaining your own, developing your own, building your own. And the children, by the time, like I said, they 12, 11, 12, 13, 14, they already in, you know, and they got mentors all around them. They got OGs like you, you know what I mean? And you yeah. put them on it and they know. That's what we need more adults. And that seems to be the situation that we got. A lot of children need this guy in the way got enough people involved taking care of that ratio. That manpower, absolutely, yeah. man. You know how big it is for us to show up with five, six brothers, man, and we just there like, hey, you oh, see yeah. these two youngsters right here? We oh, got yeah. them, man. They ours, and we just really- I know. Yeah, yeah, those children love those moments, man. Man, mm -hmm. it, it moves them, man. It shifts them, and, and just to see that level of manhood, because that, you know, a lot of my work now, man, is, you know, I'm doing the school to prison thing, um, Another the the piece that goes with that is the development of manhood, right? And so, um, but we have to as as the adult men, we got to come to terms with what that means and what that looks like. And so, you know, just getting with brothers and us really giving some definition and controlling the narrative, right? As opposed mm -hmm. to letting outside forces control mm -hmm. what manhood means. We know what our community needs as far as you know. Mm -hmm. yeah going to take. And so uh, that's one of my big missions. Now I got another brother I'm partnering with and, you know, it, it putting rites of passage back into this whole thing. Yeah, you know, that anymore, you know uh, taking young brothers out to, you know, out to the country, out, away from the city and just letting them be able to earn yeah. a hunt, you know, like, you know, a lot of things. How they even grow your food. Yeah, yeah, growing food. That's that's a major, major part, you know, just the mindset right. that it's going to take for us to right, right. redo or, you know, kind of pivot out of, like you said, integration was really the setup, man. And, you know, we, we, now when you look at that, we, we mm -hmm. 50 years. Back. And, and it does, and, and we're on our way to it, but it does got to do a lot better. And we will. And what's so fortunate is that it doesn't take all of us to make things better for all of us. Mm -hmm. That's what's so great. Yeah. So, yeah. That's just a small, so committed few, man, can change. It's always co committed and consistent, persistent. We get it done. And it's happening as we speak. You right. Know? And Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. like this perfect example. I know a brother lived like an hour and a half away, got 315 acres. Mm -hmm. We definitely going to do something with the youngsters. Right, right from Dallas, man, we're going to drive them in something nice. I know we can rent a nice bus and, mm -hmm. and let them see whatever. My man say about four hour a day, he could teach them so many things. We're going to make that happen in 2023. I'm saying, yeah, we're good. Yeah, you know absolutely. what I'm saying? Oh, so we need to collaborate on some things too, actually. 
Definitely, definitely. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I always say, man, I, I can get us the youngsters, right? I can, that's, that's my, like, I'm the liaison, you know, uh, whatever I do, you know, I tell people, you know, this is beautiful, man. I love being a part of it, but how do we bring this to, you know, the grassroots level where I can get the children involved in this? Well, well let me tell you something else, and I wasn't planning on bringing this up per se, because I want to be mainly your show and what this <laughs> stuff is, but I'm like newly involved in the uh, professional it, billiards uh, instructors association. Oh, okay. Well, uh, well, OG, uh, uh, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Mitchell. Mitchell. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. I'm in there with him. Yeah, yeah. And see, it's so much potential in that situation to bring it. those babies in, and you know they can get scholarships and yeah. being like Thomas at these uh, country clubs because I didn't even know billiards was a sport. It's a, a, a congressional sport, like it's absolutely it's the constitution, like it's it's official, official. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm yeah. in that. And so the potential is great for that. And matter of fact, I'll be taking some ch children to the facility this Saturday. Okay. Uh, yeah, Texas Social Club down there, 211 Irving, North okay, Irving, downtown, that. right across from uh, Thanksgiving Square. I know what 211 yeah. uh, we, I do some work with the co workers. Uh, uh, space over there, so uh, okay, yeah, I know yeah. Exactly. See, it's we all need to collaborate, man. And, and uh, I think my man said probably be good to have about maybe 10 children, uh -huh. you know, where he could just really handle the situation. You know, you have whatever amount of children you want to have a ratio of adults, right, right? Right, so yeah, and then we can maybe do you know a couple of trips a month with different children since all can't really go at one time That's and true. really get to see that. And then those <clears throat> that have a knack for that. They'll, you know, develop from that. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. so many times, a lot of people don't get to find out what their knack is in life because everybody mm -hmm. has a knack, but not everybody finds out what it is. Right Sometimes is. because they never got to be near that yeah, instrument. Exposure, man. Exposure. That attribute to that. You Absolutely. See? So, Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, well, funny I, you know, I, well, as a youngster, um, I the way I learned how to play pool is so I was living in Milwaukee at the time. I would sneak over to the pool hall with all the old dudes and uh, I'd just be in there, man, and watching them shoot and, and you know, just really watching. I remember the picture on the wall. I don't know if you remember that classic with all the dogs. You know, they got the Oh, picture. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you've seen it. Sometimes yeah. poker, sometimes dogs. Yeah, you exactly. Them. So, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I, I just remember that, man. I used to sneak in there, man. They let me sit and they watch and, you know, I just, like, that was my game. I just took to it. Used to go to the okay. boys and girls club and play yeah. and stuff. Now, now, he did tell me, he said, you know, that street pool is a little different than the regulated pool that they do under the, the root. They got a lot of rules and things that they play okay. with. Okay. So yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. But, you know, you shoot, you shoot, you know. And so, yeah, but then the potential of the uh, <clears throat> scholarships and various mm -hmm. things, then the exposure that the children yeah, will get to see yeah, us yeah. having our own things and they can be there safe and comfortable Absolutely. and unrestricted and all that good Absolutely. thing, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of lessons that you can teach through the game of pool because it's a life game. Well, you know, that's uh, linked to STEM. Yeah, absolutely. This pool is linked to STEM, absolutely. and you know what? I'm just recently finding out what STEM actually is. I've been thinking for a couple of years that STEM was something linked to medical bi biology type stuff, <laughs> and it's, it's not. I mean, that's a part of it, but it, you well, know, it's yeah, but not in the way I thought. Like, uh, oh, like STEM uh, cells. That's what you were yeah, saying. This, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought it was linked to when I heard no, that. But it's science, it's, technology, it's like, engineering, you know, mathematics. mathematics. Absolutely, that's, that's, that's the acronym. Huh? Yeah, they, they got steam too, and, and that's where they add the arts piece. That's the part that I come in on. With okay, my, uh, okay. You know, we deal with the arts, the theater, the music arts, the creative arts, expressive arts. You know what I mean? We do See, all that. And, and that's what I say about Dallas too. <clears throat> Excuse me, part of which Dallas haven't always had uh, fighters. You know, like during the time when everybody else was burning the city down, Dallas, they have them in check already. But it's been some fighters since I've been here. And not only that, it's been people that try to help the children. Right, and that's right. the part I love so much. And that's this me, is really right. and this is really a, actually a great town that we handle our business. And we have the resources collectively as a people. We do, so, we do. And it's coming we, together. And and I'm gonna tell you this, this here, like even you and I have in this conversation, man, mm -hmm. and we say we're gonna do some work together. I'm meeting other brothers, man, and we're saying we're gonna do some so work many together. right here where we are. Yeah. 
So all we gotta do is lock up, bro. You know, we lock up. Well, Dallas, Texas, I contend it's gonna be the new black renaissance for the next. <laughs> I said that more than a month ago. Oh, man. That's, what that's real, said. though. Yeah. And it's I been it. happening as we speak because we're in it, so we see the progress. Yeah, those that are not participating in it don't know about it because yeah, the man. mass media is not going to show our best, yeah. it's going to show our work. I, I can see a foreigner coming here and look at TV and the news and think, Wow, all black folks use the n word because mm -hmm. <laughs> man, we can tell you what's horrible. This nation they don't love it, they hate us actually, but they yeah. have us, whatever genre that we're in mm -hmm. movies, TV series, and all that. Like this one, show, I don't know what it is, but this lady, black lady, she's a DA or something. Mm -hmm. But then she on her downtown relaxing with her fellow, and she using the N word. I mean, really, mm -hmm. every black person on every level do not use that word. Right, so it's right, like right, right, everybody's right. disrespecting us, right. and the nation is say, "Yeah, free fall, do them black folks how you want to," because mm -hmm. you don't hear or see talking about yeah, them kite Jews. They right. ain't gonna have it. They don't say nothing about them wop so and so Italians, right? Because they ain't gonna have it. And then if it does happen. If it was, let's say it wasn't nothing, we were united like we should be, they wouldn't be messing with us. Mm -hmm. Then they would do somebody else. You right. see what I'm saying? And I purposely, when I give examples of others like kites for Jews and wops for uh, Italians, I purposely didn't do the Mexicans or the Orientals. Mm -hmm. You see, everybody got something, but they get spanked a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody messing with them Italians and them Jews, you feel me? But I'm saying <laughs> they ain't supposed to be messing with us either. Right. In the right. society, the the FA, whoever it is, ain't supposed to be letting nobody do any people like it is. Because it's not a hundred percent percentage of us that embrace that. Sadly, it looked like it's a big percentage, and I'm sure the percentage is bigger than it should be. Mm -hmm. But it ain't as big as they making it look. Well, you know, it's always like that. You know, I I, I grew up in the hood, and you know, I live live in the hood. Like, it's it's funny because even with that. I can look down the block and a lot of our elders, they own their home. Like it, it was it, like, it, it wasn't like everybody on the block was, was you know, like we were normal. It's just, you had the, that house right there. They written out and you know, they sell a dope out of there. You know, it's going to be a mixture pretty much. It's going to be a mixture, but it's, it's, you know, it's not like all of us participated in the legalities. It was, a, you know, absolutely. It's that you know, whoever that so was their lifestyle, right? Yeah, like and so it's just you know you get a bad rap because you know you you are in an environment where you know you can't specifically get things removed. You know, right, but when you have a society that let a specific people get dog like that mm -hmm. by everything in that society, right. see, black people need to wake them. That's what I love about this book right here, Black Masters. Mm -hmm. This shows you how they feel about us. And when I first saw this, I jumped on it because it's like, come on now. I knew about Rosewood and I knew mm -hmm. about Tulsa. I know about 25 more, and this is just 27 well documented. This exactly. ain't all that ever happened. It, you it, see. It, yeah. And now I'm like, okay, I jumped because I'm like, okay, it's crazy. But so many black folks, all the history and even current going on day, how they show us how they hate us, kill us, been doing it forever. But still, some of us just don't see how much we hate it, and I don't get it. What they gotta do to you. <laughs> for you to see, you are the people that you're citizens, but you are the unloved citizenry in the United States of America. But what has to happen for the masses to see that? That's a burden, though, brother. That I, I believe a lot of people. Like I work with some millennials, man, and and I can tell you, they they don't want to pick that up. They don't. Okay, now when you say millennials, what's that age group that you talking oh, about? The, the 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 you know I got young brothers that I work with. They're like twenty three, twenty four. You know. Like, that's you know, the age when they say millennials, I hear that, but I'm it goes, it, it, you know, up to like 34, 33. Okay, 34 to 34 is what yes, you're saying. So like. It's like that age group group, but that they were born, if you think about when they were born, yeah, right. They were born right after the crack epidemic, right? So okay. out of the 80, late 80s, early 90s, that's when they were brought into the the the, <laughs> the whole timeline. And so they have a different outlook on on life. Right. And many of them having been cut off from what happened in the 60s and, you know, even what happened in the 70s. For you the say moment. cut off, but they haven't been informed in school by us older generations. Exactly. Well, well, but what well, you got be happening. Should mass, be happening. mass incarceration took that voice out. Right. So a lot of if you think about what happened to y'all. 
your generation got strung out on crack or was crack dealing and no crack one uh, well you say okay my gender I'm I was saying what, I, what I'm saying no 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 I was thinking about when I was growing up at first no, no, was no. yeah my generation yeah right. that came so, in the 80s I was like my, 20s my, in the 80s my my yeah, mother right. is 67 right so she was born in 55 so I by the time they became they became like parents like they that around the time they that was the epidemic that came along 20s, boom crack you know Right, right. right. Moving out, crack was moving in, and then in the eighties, that's all it was, right? So that generation, well, out, and that wet, that wet was out. <laughs> that's yeah, real. Yeah. That's no, real. I, 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 yeah, real. Exactly. yeah, but it it was take it was taking the minds, it was taking you know uh, the. the Harry had little awesome. pockets of syrup too. You know how the drug thing do. <laughs> that's just real talk. That's right yeah, here in you Dallas know, too. Syrup, the lean, all of that. You know, that's right here in Dallas too. Now, just yeah. You no, know, one thing about Dallas, they gonna let these people go so far, but they gonna contain it. But this is something I'm trying to understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, DFW. You mentioned DFW, but I think you really went to the Dallas school. But FW <laughs> should Dallas, yeah. Right, but FW is supposed to clue for work. I'm trying yeah. to understand why am I just finding out, and only because of this podcast and social media stuff that it's been a bunch of murders in Fort Worth through gang violence through the last ten years or more. And I'm trying to understand now. They've been showing us Dallas news, but no Fort Worth news. This is DFW. We get the D, but not the FW. If it weren't for meeting certain people, I didn't even know all this gang stuff was going on in Fort Worth. Yeah, it's right up the street. Line. Do you, Dallas, it's right up the street. Dallas do what Dallas do. It's yeah, but Dallas I believe do. this. The reason they ain't talking about it because they like what's happening. They're not going to let it, Dallas get out of hand like that. They shouldn't have let a Fort Worth get out of hand like that either. And they that, need to, hey, that ain't my lane. Bro. I, I stay in my lane. Well, see, the whole black thing is my lane. So everything that affects us is my lane. That's just me. It. Anything affects I, black people is my lane. And I get it. I'm different. I'm different in that. Yeah, yeah. You choose to do I'll this thing. I choose to do multi lane highways. Huh? Yeah, but I say you choose this lane. I choose multi lane highways. Yeah, but yeah, it's to yeah. each his own. I'm it's not. You know. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. yeah. I ain't tripping. And, and that's why I said I don't know nothing about. But that. I'm looking at DFW. Well, that, see, uh, and I didn't either till this podcast stuff. And it's like they called it the uh, murder worth and all. And I ain't. And I'm like, why are we not even seeing this on the news? You need to have uh, uh, brother Sharif on. He can tell you about that. Like he he know that side or or Charlton White. Get Charlton White to come on the show. Say, say, man. I'm gonna say this <laughs> to that. Say I'm gonna say this to that. that. I'm gonna say this to that. There's no way I would mess with a fool. So I ain't no way I'm gonna deal with a guy saying, like that. I'm just saying all the Fort Worth. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about what's happening in the black community. That's bigger than. Just for work, and definitely an idiot like that guy you mentioned. So no, brother. Uh -uh. Oh, no yo, way. yo, like, bro. <laughs> no, no, I don't like anything that's harmful to black people. That's what I don't like. I'm a hey, fan man. of black people. Let's talk about. Fan. I'm a fan of black people. So, but you have to go by the uh, content of the character of the individual is what I do. I no, I, I, I got you. And like I said, uh, to, to like you said, like you said, to each his own. Uh, the, the that brother and other brothers who do what they do. I'm the type, like I said, I stay in my lane. I don't pass no judge. I know yeah, everybody got their that. own way. Everybody got their own way of doing their thing, right? And so my thinking is, everybody, you know, I may not agree with anybody's methodology. I might not agree with the words you choose or the way you choose to do it. Um, however, I do know what I'm here to do. And as I said, I, I take on what's was for me to take on because for me if if we can be very focused i think one of the things that i'm learning is that the more focused and strategic you are with dealing with things that are in your own background backyard because i had to learn that even about my own family and my own house like the things that i was out in the community trying to help other people do i needed to take care of things in my own home and make sure everything was operating and functioning how it should and then from that base, go out and do all of this other stuff. So that's that's me. I'm an yeah, inward. Yeah, that's that outward. one man. You're right. That's you know that one man. I'm an inward, outward kind of. So as long as the systems are working within, then I can go out and be of assistance to things that are outside of self. And so that's what I meant by that. Just you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. But uh, and then my thing is this too. A lot of times, because like for instance, 
and I don't even know if you use N word yourself, but most of these podcasts, black folks, they use N word left and right. Our children are doing it too. Because you're talking about our children, our children that. Well, our adults are not doing it. So how do we expect our children to be better than us if we ain't doing better than them? Come on, they ain't making no sense. So let me finish. But my thing is, like you mentioned that, brother, if a person can't talk in a way that it's okay for children to listen, I don't want no part of it on a community. Right. And and only I mentioned the brother because I've seen him both ways. Like I I see see, homeboy. That's that's two faced it. If you go both ways to that extreme. That's two faces. Come on now. Listen, listen. The bad extreme. And I'm, let me tell you this. I'm not even going to repeat what I heard this fella say because I know about trickery. You can mess around and say, yeah, he said so, 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 and so. And they'll just say the part that you say he said, but only like it's coming out of your mouth. Because mm-hmm. I don't play games, bro. Let me tell well, you no, I, I, listen, Wait a minute. I say you are. Wait a minute. Let me just finish this. Go social ahead. media, social media, like every other thing in this nation, including money and everything else, is a tool. It yeah. is a tool. Right. Now, social media is a tool to be used only so far. We can't talk about real serious black people. This is what we're going to do. Not on social media. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So, since it got brought up, I was just letting it be known. The man's an idiot and a buffoon. Oh, and I don't mess this, with him kind. Like I told you, this, this is the reason that I'm even saying this. Yeah. Is because I'm saying. Because you deal with the brother two faces, I don't. For, the brother was running for city council in Fort Worth. Who was? Oh, you're talking about little dude? Fort Worth. Um, How long I've ago? heard the brother sound How long very, ago? very out there, but I've also heard the brother make a lot of sense in some other ways. And so, what I'm saying is, I've seen, I've well, seen that's 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 what double and, agents and not, do. <laughs> not just him. I've seen a lot of brothers do that. There's like, a I've lot of double agents, agents out there. The side of the neck on a, one thing at well, the but end, see, okay, now on certain on things, the side of the neck, we just caught up on certain things. Like, let me ask you this question: What percentage? Of black people, you think actually have the N word in their vocabulary? So you keep on talking about this N word. Listen, I, don't I just know. asked a question. I, Listen, I don't. If you, I don't, if you I don't want to answer, let me ask you this, and let me ask it this way. Because if you ask me percentages, that means somebody has to go do some research, which means you. No, have to I, do I'm going by from you what you have seen and observed and dealt said. with. That's all huh? I'm talking about. It's a speculative question, not a. You talking about research. in my personal life? Opinion. Only opinion I'm asking, yes. Oh, I, I, there's no way I can tell you that. I can tell you that different one of us, depending on where we are in our own personal growth and development, feel a certain way about that word. That word applies, and there is there are people who are niggas. There are niggas out here. Niggas is a very manufactured product of growing up in America. I hear what you're saying, so you it is a real so. thing, right? Just like bitches are the same thing. I'm not one of those who get to a point where I'm like, oh, they don't, you just. No, there are niggas out here. When you drop into your ego, that's and you your perception, you sir. Person. That is definitely your perception. And I'm letting <laughs> you know. So you you ask me about it, when right? I ain't it, hurting. I'm just you know. When you drop it in, in, that's not. I'm not tipping in. When you, become, when you become ego, and it becomes I, 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 as me and my brother always say, oh. That go to nigga, right? Well, let me the ask you this then. Real. Well, since you start popping on, the nigga will does, blow up everything and let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Where does your definition come from? I'm from, listen, did I tell you I'm from the hood? I ain't tell you that, did I? I know, yeah, niggas you very did. Well. You said Gary yeah. Indiana, but I, said, I, I, I know niggas very well, right? Okay, I know so you said you got your definition from the streets. Is that what you're saying? I got my definition from the, the, if we want to go back, we can go back to the plantation and the making of the nigga, right? No, I'm like, talking about your life. No, your life time. We can no, go you, to, we can go no, to the No, just for your life. Just huh? for your life. How oh, you want to go to my life? Okay, yeah, how are you life, introduced to it? That's all I'm yeah. asking. So what I'm saying to you is, I, I kind of explained it before, um, mm-hmm. the the generation before or the group i don't like the word generation anymore but the, the group of ancestors before we got here they didn't use the word nigga, right they they weren't that wasn't a part of their terminology because if you're talking 50s and 60s even my granddaddy now that wasn't like they didn't grow up saying nigga this nigga that right so what at some point in time right we lost sight of who we were right integration happened we moved into their cities we start eating their food and, and living their life and, you know, robbing, stealing, killing each other, doing all kind of wild and crazy. We lost family. We lost relationship. We lost every sense of self. And we became this lower, lower, the base aspect of ourselves. In that mentality, a nigga 
was emerged, right? The nigga has a certain way in which he thinks. I know niggas well. Right? Who created the Who word? Created niggas. Who created the word? Well, the nigga, the, the word has an origin. It's an evolution of it. You know, you, you went from deep. Mm -hmm. No, I just was adding to see what you, you know, say. You, I, I wasn't trying to you know, get deep in it. Yeah, no, you good. As a matter of fact, Tupac tried to change the word and say the word was an acronym for never. But it didn't work. That's the only thing I know. He well, had it worked, on, it worked it on some work. of us. It worked on some of us. I'm a Tupac. I can't tell. I'm from that, that group of people. So from Tupac us. Tupac is my favorite rapper of all time. Right. So I check it out. I when he died. And I was. Mess with Tupac. I but see, yeah, I how old? Thirty six. Right, thirty six so when listen. Tupac died. Right, so what I'm saying is, yeah. I, I and I was so on it then. For but, me, you know, I'm different. <laughs> but for me, I'm a young man, so I'm a young man finding out who I am. So when he he put oh, yeah, it in that yeah. perspective, that's yeah. when I started to leave the the low vibrational part of what a nigga is and started moving into yeah for, Pac was trying Pac he was, was trying, trying right and yeah, so I understood tried. what he was doing because I understood he came from he didn't come from niggas right he came now he had from, good intent and I right. believe he was evolving when he died and so for some of us yeah. because we followed like we were we were growing up in that like he was helping us define our own manhood us as fatherless sons right yeah, who right. really are just growing up with each other. You know what I mean? I got a partner who I grew up with. He said, you know, he said to me, nigga, I'm your dad. Right? Because we always used to say this thing like we were raising each other. Because really, when you're growing up in the hood and neither one of y'all got a father, you my daddy and I'm yours. Right? There's things that I'm born and I'm equipped with that you don't have and there are things that you are born. He was good with his hands to fix a car, to fix a house. He can do all that. I was right, right. look smart, right? I can show right, you how right, to right. read book and street smart. Like, so we raised each other, and that was the idea. But I'm, what I'm saying is, for mm -hmm. some of us, when we heard the evolution of the word, we evolved with it, right? I used to right, be a right, nigga. Right. I used to be on nigga shit. Nigga do certain things. I know what that is. I don't right. get grown. Because what I feel like people do is they reach a certain age, and then they get holier than thou. Like, I watch a lot of the elders. And I know the people that's like that, brother. I stopped using the N-word at 19. So I wasn't I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying you directly. I'm <laughs> no, just but saying I just wanted that. somebody to hear that there's a person as old as me that stopped at 19. That's I just right. want and, see and, there's and, more than me and you watching this. This is for everybody. Right. So you yeah. you're saying that you were one of those who stopped at 19, right? Absolutely. But what I'm and making before I stopped, of, it was just meant a male rather than a female. That's all it meant when I used it. Oh, see, nothing, to like, nothing to do with your color. Nothing to do with color. It was me. a gender thing. And, I've been and, and it's Philly geographical too. too, since I grew up in Philadelphia. You and I've been Indiana. Philly. I've been no, I said grew up. up. I said grew up. And I got and we had out and there. we had the nation of Islam in my Philly. ghetto neighborhood that helped gang get stopped. Stop your brothers from killing each other. So it's just depending where you grow and how it's happening, when you grow in. And all that North Philly was a rough town in the six months. Yeah, still that's, that's what I said. It's still rough. But I'm saying this, but the nation of Islam with Mothers Against Gang War in 74 got gang war and stopped in the city of Philadelphia. Black people, black organizations. It, it yeah. worked. I, so I, the N word wasn't. I think you, you know, you pull it wasn't for black it. people. It was just a gender thing. Me and the huh? people I knew, it was like, yeah, that name. And it didn't matter what color they were. It was a male. We knew that. And unfortunately, you know, when if you say N for a man, you know it will be for a female, unfortunately. Yeah, absolutely. That was the talk. absolutely. Yeah. They, right. they and they were like I said, they were real manufactured products of an environment. These are mindsets that took place in an environment. They, I, I don't, I don't really fight against people with that word. And the word has even evolved because when I'm around, well, I don't be, I, I never fight against my people ever. Well, no, no, that's but not what I'm saying. Anything. I'm saying, well, I'm the, just saying I'm using the word, word but I'm letting it be known because I'm saying this when I speak to it, I'm just trying to share a different perspective of the situation. I'm never fighting with my people to inform them. And enlighten them. That's all no, I'm no, trying no. to do. I think there's more than one way to look at it. Words yeah, have saying, meaning. See, saying that's saying why words are so right. Absolutely, we're not. But yeah, we're you not saying anything really? different. I'm just saying right. that it, it is a real thing. The word has evolved over time. Uh, the youngsters use it in a totally different uh, perspective. But the adults uh, are using it. So maybe if the if if we think the adults should stop, I mean, the youngsters should stop. Then the adults got to lead the way and, and stop. I, in, in an ideal world, brother, you 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 on to something if we can if we get that some change. Of us really, we're gonna do a lot of things. And that's just some people say that ain't important. Everything that's wrong in our situation is important. Everything. 
See, it is, it is. Yeah. But what I've learned is that I, can, I me, I'm just talking about me. I it's can't good. every battle, so I gotta pick. Nobody one can. I can't either. Like, so my right battles. I can be about that. That word, nigga, yeah. they gonna have to figure that out sometimes. Yeah, somebody, future. but they can't figure it out if nobody don't give them the information to use to figure it out. That's why I come in. Well, there. like I said, so with me, I speak with the youngsters, and I always tell people. I you call really them. Do, I don't do grown people very well, but the children, yeah. I can really, really get in there because I know that they're they're the future, and they that the way that they look at things will really be impactful towards what this world is going to look like. And for me, how they look at it and what they attach and associate with it is very different than the energy that. The, so we all need to talk to everybody and get that's understanding. What I'm to I say. contend. I contend that there's four generations at all times, but we'll talk about that another time. Yeah. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah, That'll yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate yeah. you, brother. You know, like I said, the school to prison pipeline is it's a real deal, man. And yeah, we, you know, we can we, do something about it too. We can do something about it, and that's what you know. My my, I trust that this this broadcast your platform will we you know just whatever energy is used to push it forward that we can you know build off of it and really do something to. To change Do you have it. like a website or something like that? Yeah, yeah, I have a website. We are family enterprises.org. We are family enterprises.org. Uh, I'm on IG, you know, uh, at We're Family uh, Enterprises. Uh, you know, I, mo most of my stuff is, you know, just being out in the community and, and just really doing this work on a very, very grassroots level. Um, yeah, that's a good group. That's where the Black Panther Party did it. See, that's what I know when I grew up. And it was a Black Panther Party office headquarters. They called it like two blocks from where I live. Mm -hmm. And when they wanted the people to know something, they marched mm -hmm. in the street and yeah, said yeah. it. That's what they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what we do? We go we go into the schools and into the uh, community centers and, and, and put programs in place. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, see, that's because they'll let you in and they don't yeah, let us all that, in. That, so we got to get more into that thing where we're bringing them out somewhere that is public where even our prison ex prison brothers and sisters can participate too. Yeah, and, and that's the pipeline that, that, that I'm creating yeah. as well. And, and That'd be great, man, because there's a lot of local brothers that would speak to them children. Yeah, I know. Well, and, and But we're at a point, and I'm going to say this, and then we, we can wrap up. I want everybody to know, though, that uh, we don't we that that coming and speaking that's not that's not what we do like you got to actually come in and commit yourself to grabbing up some of these youngsters and saying I am personally going to be your mentor I'm personally going to make sure that you have what you need because I think the way we do things now we we do what's most convenient for us and it's like we come in we say a few words and then we leave and that's cool, but this work really doesn't get done with our children unless they know that you're going to be in there with them, that you're going to be committed to their growth and development. And that's what we're building. We're building a group right, right. want to commit to the, the growth and development long term yeah. of our children. You know what I mean? And that's a different kind of commitment. And I respect that people can't. You know, well, not like, sadly, not everybody loves children. That's the sad right. part. Right, and, and that's the thing, and that's why you yeah. like you. You gotta love them. Right? I love them. It's okay, gotta the, be the politicians. Passion, politicians can't get their vote. The business, right. they don't have no money. So, and that's why we don't. Of people that's why that they don't a lot of money. That's why it's not a lot of money for youth programming. And I've been out here fighting very hard to try to get money for our children, right. and right. they always got an excuse as to why. They cannot fund things that are going to be directly impactful for our children. They pay for everything else. But I yeah. do know that since they can't vote, nobody really cares for them. And that's a part of the child advocacy. And they don't have no money to spend of their own either because they can't work. So, right, right. Yeah, so you have to be an advocate to care. And I'm like you, I am a child advocate. Yeah, that's you cool. have to be. You have yeah. to be. And, and, and so, you know, I, like I said, respect and, and, you know, thank you for, you know, the, the opportunity. To thank you for coming, man. I really appreciate that because I was trying to get some people, had some people lying, but they didn't give me no dates. And when you come, uh, I'm like, yeah. oh, man, yeah, please do come. Yeah, yeah. I just <laughs> I just wanted to, you know, right now I'm on my circuit. So, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm tapping in with brothers and sisters who want to, you know, talk about the issues and, and, and really put some solutions in place. And so, you know, I appreciate you again, but. Likewise, Damon and Brother Jamil. And definitely when we do that farm thing, I'm going to holler at you on that.
No, for sure, for sure. Uh, we can, yeah, we got yeah. the children lined up. All we need right now is the the double dutch bus to go on down the street and start scooping them up. So we good. Yeah, that's what's up, brother. All right, peace uh, and love, my man. All right, peace and love. Bro. I'll talk to you. <laughs> all right, absolutely. <laughs> Another good man. <laughs>